4748. Uh, Tim in Minnesota, thanks for your patience on hold. Thank you, John. I have enjoyed your show for quite some time. Wow. Well, I don't get that a lot. I don't know what I did, but thanks. <laughs> Normally, it's the angry people chasing me out of town with pitchforks, so that's nice to hear. What's on your mind tonight? Well, you know, I'm an ex-military man, ex-Navy person. Thank you. Was at Thank the, you for your service. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Uh, I was in at the end of the Vietnam War, and I'm celebrating my 65th birthday in a week. And something ah. that I have, something that I have been saying for 30 years now, ever since Columbine, was if you're finding a difficult time trying to regulate the weapons, why don't we regulate the ammo? Because as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, um, the Second Amendment doesn't cover ammo. It Correct. covers guns. Correct. And so if we can make it as tight as possible and have those bullets registered, you have to sign your name every time you buy a limited amount. And mm -hmm. any time that any of those bullets are used in something, they can be traced back to the individual and they will be incarcerated until an answer is found. I love it. I mean, you know, Chris Rock had that bit 20 years ago, how we've just got to make the ammunition cost $10,000 a bullet. That's the only way to make it stop. I know. Your your idea might be better than mine, Tim. My idea was uh, legalize every possible kind of gun, but only for women. I, I, I think generally, <laughs> yesterday's transgender alleged assailant notwithstanding, I think generally testosterone has shown it can't be trusted with firearms throughout all recorded human history. So I'm in favor mm -hmm. of, you know, letting women have whatever guns they want, and then men can apply to women to see if they're worthy. That's That's my system. Yep. Yours is much more efficient. Oh, well, I was just thinking that, like I said, it would just be so easy to regulate because if you just laid down the law on the ammo, like I said, you have to sign your name every time right. that you purchase something. So all of the stuff is traced back to you. And, uh, and then let me give you a better one. Let me give you a better one then. This will blow. Let me give you my idea. Let's say you okay. can't actually ban AR 15s. You can't actually ban civilians from owning these machines that have no civilian purpose. They're designed to kill lots of humans really fast. Uh, he, here, exactly. Here's where I would go along with one of them, okay? We register them all like cars, but when you purchase one, you have to get two people to co-sign it with you, okay? You sign a, you sign a release when you buy an AR-15 or an AK-47 saying that, that if this gun is ever used in any kind of crime, before it's lawfully sold to someone else, if this gun is ever used in any kind of crime, that you, the undersigned, and your two witnesses will both be legally liable for any damages. That, exactly. that is a way we could not ban these things, but guarantee that people would be a bit more responsible. Because to me, one of the big problems is when legal guns become illegal guns. But again, you know, I'm splitting hairs. I don't think civilians need to own this shit. I mean, that 28-year-old person in Knoxville did not need an AR-15. If you need an AR-15 for hunting, you are not a champion of Second Amendment rights. You suck at hunting. <laughs> exactly. Oh, right my on. God. Tim, thank, thank you so you very God. much. It's good to hear from you.